The fifth generation of Pokemon games began in 2010 with the releases of Pokemon Black and White in Japan. These gave us a whole slew of new pocket monsters to not only catch, but horribly mispronounce as well. I won't name names, but a certain pilot in training may or may not have thought this thing was called Sigalif when he first saw it. Over the next several years, we received three more generations of games set in the Talos, Alola, and Gala regions, giving us hundreds more names to butcher, like what people in the Pokemon world must do to Lechonk in order to get ham for their sandwiches. Unlike when Frieza said Namek only had 5 minutes left, then proceeded to fight Goku for like 10 episodes, I'm not going to waste any time here. We're all gas, no brakes. Which is also an apt description for my racehorse, Tudor. I should also mention that Tudor takes a lot of money to house and feed, and the only way he can sleep at night is if I play him a really obscure British cooking show on a streaming service that costs $300 a year. So if you could please consider subscribing, that'd be great. Not for me and my deep-seated need to see that number next to my name climb. No, definitely not that. It's 100% for Tudor. Anyways, like I said, no more time wasting. It doesn't matter if you're Canadian or not, you always turn Canadian for at least a split second when you said this Pokemon's name. It's Aegislash, right? Of course not. This is the Pokemon company we're talking about. The Sword and Shield Pokemon is officially called Aegislash, like the sound Mini-Me makes. I looked up the word Aegis, which is a shield or breastplate emblematic of majesty that was associated with Zeus and Athena, and it's pronounced Aegis, so technically Aegislash makes sense. And what about Aegislash's pre-evolutions? The baby stabber is fairly obvious, as it's a combination of hone and edge, hone edge, but the middle evolution is a little nuanced. It's not Dewblade, like do you want to go on a date with me Jennifer Lawrence, it's duh blade, as in duh, of course it said like double blade. It has two blades. The Pokemon that exists because we didn't push back hard enough against the existence of Klefki, a literal keychain, we have the Parker Posey Picker Pokemon. You might think it's comfy like the couch, or comfy like the thing you never use in your hair, but literally the worst possible pronunciation is the official one. Are you ready? This Pokemon is seriously called Comfey. Like, come on, seriously? Comfey? That sounds like something an immature 12 year old would call it. Now it's time for a short little history lesson that definitely won't cause you to double tap your phone screen right now to skip ahead 10 seconds. When I bought Pokemon Sun, I wanted a diverse team. My starter was Popplio, the best of the Alola starters, and I added Salandit and Grubbin, as well as a few others. Well, after wasting several hours with a Salandit on my team that never evolved, I checked online only to learn that a male Salandit does not evolve. That was time I'd never get back. And then something similar happened with Chargebug. I'd gotten the thing up to like level 50 and still nothing. Turns out it doesn't evolve until Pony Island, which is nearly the end of the game. Anyways, when I finally evolved it into this awesome looking thing, we, uh, we don't talk about the speed stat, I naturally called it Vikavolt, like Vimon. Imagine my surprise when I watched the anime and learned that nope, it's actually called Vikavolt. Stupid Sophocles always ruining everything. Let's continue the Alola Pokemon pronunciations I hate with Beware. Except it's not actually Beware, like Beware the Bear, it's Beware, like Beware the Bear. But there's a far more popular Alola Pokemon with a horrible pronunciation. So the whole shtick with this thing is that it mimics Pikachu, which means it should be mimic you, right? By now you should know that's not the case. It's actually Mimi Q, like Mimi from the Drew Carey show. I'm telling you right now, I outright refuse to call it anything other than Mimi Q. Mimi Q is just not gonna happen. Before I regale you with even more Alola Pokemon you've said wrongly, let's head over to Unova for a quick pit stop and brush up on our German. First off though, let me just say Itch Mag Fube. With that important announcement out of the way that I totally nailed in perfect German, here's the Unova Dragon line. There's a lot of you out there who call them Dino, like the human name, Zwilis, like why doesn't this thing just get a haircut, and High Dragon, like you're greeting a dragon, or High Dragon, like a dragon that is so high right now, high in the air, you degenerates, but you're wrong on all three. They're based on the German words for one, two, and three, because one head, two heads, three heads, you get it. Which means the correct pronunciations are Dino, Zvilus, and Hydragon. 
Thus concludes our German lesson for today, but we're not leaving Europe quite yet. The evolved form of Steeny, which is the evolved form of Bound Suite, isn't pronounced Serena like Blake Lively's character in Gossip Girl. Instead, it's pronounced Zarina like Zar, which is a type of royalty. And when you manage to peel your eyes away from Zarina's insane hips and notice the crown on its head, it all makes a lot more sense. Same with the pre-evolved form of Mandibuzz. While I've always called it Vullaby, like Samantha Bee, it's actually Vullaby. That's because Vullaby is a combination of Vulture and Lullaby. Except when I think Lullaby, I think something calming. I don't think the diapered Pokemon, yes, that is its actual designation, or Vultures. But clearly someone at the Pokemon Company does, and they should probably see a therapist about it. How about another Pokemon with a V that you've been saying wrong? While Type Null is one of the easiest names in Pokemon history to pronounce, it's literally Type Null, the evolution isn't. I've been calling it Silvalli, like ain't no valley low enough. But this man-made doggo is actually called Silvalli, like ally. We're learning so much today. Also, side note, kinda weird how we tip waiters but not teachers, even though teachers provide a much more important service than something you could do by literally standing up and carrying a plate. No, this is not a roundabout way to get you to give me money since I'm technically teaching you something. But if you wanted to give me money, I wouldn't say no. What's that? You want to fight me over my lack of tact? I have to warn you, I know Kung Fu. You know who else knows Kung Fu? Mian Fu and Mian Shao. Except those aren't how you say those Pokemon. They're actually Mean Fu and Mean Shao, like how it's really mean that the Pokemon company makes us pronounce them this way. Moving on, do you know the story of David vs. Goliath? It's about a crazy powerful fighter who got defeated because some kid cheated and used the slingshot. It's also what inspired the name for the evolved form of Wimpod. You know where I'm going with this. It's not pronounced Golisopod, like Lizza with S's, but rather Golisopod, like a Goliath isopod. For those who don't know, an isopod is a type of crustacean, and I totally didn't just look that up on Google. By now, you've probably realized that there's no real order to these videos. I just chucked the Pokemon in randomly without much thought. So that leads us to our next Pokemon, Scorch. Except it's a centipede, and you don't say centipede, so the official pronunciation is Scorch. Centipede, Scorch. Yeah, sometimes I do feel like an idiot for not making these connections sooner. Speaking of Pokemon that are based on real-world animals, and therefore my preconceived notions about their names are wrong, we have Inteleon. I guess in my head we had Champion Leon and the Pokemon is intelligent, hence Inteleon. But it's actually an intelligent chameleon, meaning you should call this guy Inteleon. Yes, go in the anime is right. I still think it's weird to call the Champion of the Gala region Leon when one of the Pokemon he can have has the word Leon in it and it's not pronounced Leon. Regardless, think chameleon whenever you go to say Inteleon. And whenever you go to say this Pokemon's name, apparently you have to think of a pincushion. Instead of being called Pincerchin, like a weird alien with a pincer for a chin, it's Pinkerchin. It's supposed to be a combination of Pincushion and Urchin, but all I hear is a pink urchin when it clearly isn't pink, so the connection there is a lot tougher to make. Sticking with stuff you find in the ocean, we have the Barnacle Pokemon. I'll admit I never said these two correctly. I thought the smaller one was Binacle, like you're saying goodbye to the greatest PlayStation game ever made, and I think the Big Daddy was Barbaracle, like someone who cuts your hair. But the correct pronunciations are Binacle and Barbarical. The easiest way to remember Barbarical is that it's a Barbaric Barnacle, which actually sounds pretty cool, and doesn't at all match up with Captain Handface. You could almost say the design of that last Pokemon is garbage. Okay, okay, that was a bad segue. But the Trash Heat Pokemon is definitely a name I've heard mispronounced quite often, especially from my own luscious lips. I won't get into some of the different ways I've heard it said because I'm trying to say it correctly from now on. So I'll just tell you that this pile of trash is called Garboder, or a mixture of garbage and odor. So think odor when you say its name and not throwing garbage out of a door. And what about Unova's golden goose when it comes to experience points? Instead of Audino, you should be calling this thing Audino, like I don't know why this got a mega evolution and Flygon didn't. Enough with the Unova region. I want to go to a place where you never have to worry about the power going out. In Galar, there's a Pokemon that looks suspiciously like a group of Meta Knight. When I first saw this thing, I thought it was cool, and I called it Phalanx, like fa la 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 la, I guess. 
But the Pokemon company knew I'd do that and decided to make the official name Phalanx. Like Faye, that girl in high school I had a crush on but who always ignored me. But joke's on her. I'm a struggling YouTuber and Twitch streamer while she's stuck living in a big house with three kids and a husband who plays in the NHL. She definitely missed out. Speaking of relationships, I recently heard one of my friends say my ex-wife is caked up, which put me in the mood for some cake. The drop of sticky white batter isn't called milkery, like a mixture of milk and curry, but rather milsery, which is, believe it or not, a mixture of milk and sorcery. And the cake isn't all creamy, but alchemy, which is, again, believe it or not, a mixture of alchemy and creamy. So when saying milsery, think sorcery, and when saying alchemy, think alchemy. Yeah, that's wild to me too. Keeping the fairy theme going, let's focus on one from the Kalos region. No, not AZ's Floet that somehow never evolved over thousands of years, I mean the Pokemon it evolves into. I called it Florgus for as long as I can remember. But I should have been thinking of Zooey Desk Channel's character from New Girl and called it Florgis. And how about we focus on two Pokemon that would get absolutely wrecked by Florgis? If you're unfortunate enough to meet Kara Liss in the Gala region, you can birth forth these abominations that have severe physiological issues. If you called them Dracozolt and Dracovish, like Draco Malfoy, stop that immediately. Instead of thinking Harry Potter, think Guardians of the Galaxy because these are Dracovish and Dracozolt. Obviously the character in Guardians is Drax, but it's close enough, okay? Get off my back! Why not stay with the fossil theme and focus on a Pokemon that was inspired by the island of Tortuga from Pirates of the Caribbean? I've always said Tortuga, but when I found out I was wrong, I began to cry. Which was a good thing, because the true pronunciation is Tortuga. Do you, do you smell that? Something's fishy. No, it's not someone at the office microwaving salmon. It's Basculin. And yes, that is the correct way to say Basculin, like Masculine, not Basculin, like Edward Cullen from Twilight. By extension, you would also say it's evolved form as Basculegion. We're almost at the finish line, everybody, so let's end with a few rapid-fire pronunciations. The pre-evolved form of a Raquinid is called Dupiter, not Dupiter, like a hamburger slider, because things like words and letters don't matter to the Pokemon company. And this old gentleman who enjoys killing children isn't called Drampa, like Grandpa, but rather Drampa, like Grandpa. So depending on how you say the word grandpa, this will come as a shock to you, or not as a shock at all. And last but not least, the Pokemon I am most ashamed for mispronouncing, Sigilyph, like I'll giggle if you tickle my feet. It's a mix of Sigil and Glyph, so obviously it's called Sigilyph. I'll never forgive myself for this one. And that'll do it for another installment of Trust Your Pilot Obliterates Long-Held Memories of Your First Journey Through a Pokemon Game. If you enjoyed this kind of thing, make sure to subscribe so I can continue to reach into your brain and beat up your inner child like I'm a drampaw.